All right, analysts, we have now reached the end of the forensic process and everything that we have done so far has been pretty technical, but now a whole new art comes to play. Now we need to present the information that we analyze to our target audience. And that is actually something that is a really important part and it doesn't matter how good of a job you did when you cannot put it into a form or document and present it to the people that are actually interested in it. There is a couple of considerations that I've learned throughout my career. So first of all, establish the expectations in the beginning. I think this is actually the most important part of any forensic analysis. So you need to know what is the target audience or the, the sponsor, what, is, what are they interested in? What are they looking to get out of this analysis? This happens way too often that people just go off the rails and go deep into the forensic analysis, leaving no stone unturned, but the sponsor may actually not be interested in every single detail, or they may, not, they may need the answers as quickly as they can, and they may not want to pay for additional hours or days of work that you want to put into this. So it is very important to understand the level of detail that the sponsor might be looking for. Next, definitely consider the audience that you are targeting. For example, is your audience technical and are they subject matter experts in some of the cybersecurity or IT related domains or is it a completely non-technical audience? For example, they just care about the risk and the impact that something might have to the business overall. Or does your legal team, for example, need answers or evidence to prove certain things that might have happened? The way how we present those findings is extremely important. Next, there's also alternative explanations. It is very important to be unbiased during the analysis and let the facts speak for themselves. I've definitely been guilty myself of that many times where you're just so convinced that something makes sense and something seemed malicious and after all it just wasn't. So if, there's, if there are several plausible explanations, consider each of them and don't be biased during the analysis. And lastly, Everything, every case usually ends with actionable information or next steps. So is there anything that we need to follow up on? Anything that we might have learned out of this analysis? Maybe we have identified lateral movement and we need to focus on other systems now. Or we identified important indicators of compromise that we can now use to extend our search across an environment. Or are there, for example, any vulnerabilities that may have been exploited and that need to be fixed? Or maybe accounts that might need to be disabled? So there's a lot of considerations and usually that is the information that the subject matter experts are looking for so that we can provide it to them so that they can then move on with the incident response lifecycle, for example, and remediate and eradicate a certain issue. So as you can see, there is many factors that come into play when we are going to present our findings to the audience. Now, the way how we can present our findings, there's also different types based on what I've seen throughout my career and what's kind of uh, best practices. So definitely there's the forensic report, which is usually a very comprehensive document where facts matter and you need to document every single detail that you have identified throughout the analysis. This is often used for legal cases or even for expert witness testimony. So this can go pretty far, pretty deep down the legal side of things. Or for example, consultants would also turn over a forensic report at the end of an engagement so that a client knows what happened on a specific system. However, that might not always be needed. Forensic reporting is an extremely time-consuming task and also requires some experience in technical writing, but sometimes you might just be looking for something more high-level. For example, high-level presentations in front of executives. They might just be interested in debriefs and know what happened on a high level. Or for example, you might have to fill out some forms answering questions that a team, for example, a legal team might have provided you with, and that's all they're interested in. Alternatively, there might also be the case where you have to provide a system timeline. So this is, for example, the timeline that we've been working with at the end, just filtered by the events that really matter and just provide this information that you found to the technical lead of an investigation, for example. The system timeline is then being used and can, for example, be merged with other system timelines so that if you're investigating a compromised environment, you can see what happened on which system and when and that might also tell a story around lateral movement of when an attacker might have moved from one system to another and so on so this is very interesting for sure if this is a part of a bigger incident response scenario 
And it's just a couple common ways of uh, reporting, but there's definitely other ways as well. For example, in an enterprise environment, everything might be tracked in tickets or managed through some platforms that you would have to fill out and some questions and answers, provide screenshots, so things along those lines. So it really depends on the environment as well. So as you can see, there's a lot of different ways and considerations of how to present our findings now. We need to ensure that we understand what the expectations are from the beginning on. And since technical writing and reporting is a master skill in itself, we won't be covering that in more detail in this course. But I hope this gave you a better idea of what you can do with the data that we just analyzed and how to present it to the stakeholders.